So hi, hello everybody. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the lectures thus far. Um, and now we are going to get into the nitty gritty of the course. Uh, I am delighted again that by now um, you have learned your geography, right? Which is which is extremely important, right? Because you know, <laughs> you, you you know you're living on the earth, right? And you want to kind of know it. It puts you, believe me, it puts you way ahead of others to know what your geog the geography of your world looks like. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So continuing on our uh, river valley civilization topics, right? We want to start with Mesopotamia and we want to start with Mesopotamia um, because it is one of the earliest river valley civilizations um, that we know of. So, of course, we, 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 the first thing that we um, need to look at in, in order to sort of uh, figure out the topography uh, uh, and, and geography of a region is to look at the map, right? And when you look at the map of the region that is in front of you, you see that what we had considered the Fertile Crescent right? Um, to the south of it, you see that it is the Syrian desert. And if you go further south, you will see that this is the Arabian Peninsula and the major um, deserts in the middle of it, right? Uh, which is in the, in the southwest of it also, which is called the Empty Quarter, or for your of information, um, or Rub al- Khali, literally, right, literally um, means the empty quarter. Right, so you see that this, to the south of the Fertile Crescent, right, um, is, is desert, right, is um, desert or arid land, basically, right, and to the north of it, you see that, again, there is an arc, Right of of um of uh, sort of uh, arc of mountains, right? So and if you uh, look at these mountains, um, you have the name names of them. Um, you have the names of these mountains. I have to finally figure out um what is what with these. Um, with the way I clear my, uh, I, I promise you by next time I will figure this out. Okay, so you will see, my friends, that you have um, mountains, right? Uh, in, the, in the south of um, Anatolia, right, this Turkey, co contemporary, Turkey, we call it Anatolia, right? To to the south of it, you see there are series of mountains, and these mountains are the Taurus Mountains, T-A-U-R-U-S, Taurus Mountains, right? And you see, for, for our future purposes, you, you would need to know that Anatolia also has a series of mountains, right, to the north of it, to the south of the Black Sea, right? And those are called the Pontic Mountains, right? But the arc that I was telling you about, therefore, is uh, created by the Taurus Mountains and two series of mountains that run parallel here, right? Which are called Mount Lebanon and Mount Anti-Lebanon, um, right? And, and you see that to the east of it as well, you have the Zagros Mountains, which you have to ascend in order to get to the Iranian Plateau, right? And, and of course, between the two seas, remember the, we have the mountainous lands here in the Caucasus, especially in Armenia and eastern Anatolia, Armenia being around 
this region, Azerbaijan being here, right? So um, you we remember that the that the uh, that the rivers, right? Um, came from the highlands, the highland mountains, right, of eastern Anatolia and the, and Armenia, right, and basically flowed down together to to the um, to the Persian um, Gulf, right. Um, now, um, so okay, so um, so this is the setup of the land, right, and you see that. Um, it it has water, right? The Persian Gulf here. It has water um, close to it, and of course, if you remember your maps, or uh, we can go on a map right here, and you can see. Um, you can see that. Um, okay. Um, you can see that the Persian Gulf, once again, you will we will look at it, right? So the Persian Gulf, right, empties into the Arabian Sea, right? This is the Persian Gulf, oh, the, where you see your uh, red dot is your Persian Gulf, and you come to the south of it, right? And... Um, you know, there is the Gulf of Hormuz here, and then the Gulf of Oman, right? And then you come to the Arabian Sea, from which you can basically go to a lot of places, right? And so this is very important. It is not just that Persian Gulf is is a body of water, right? But it's a body of water that connects to the oceans, right? And it, it, it connects to bodies of water that connect the continents together, right? So to the south of um, Mesopotamia, you have the Persian Gulf, and we know the importance of it, right? And for our future purposes, you have to... Uh, keep in mind that um, on on the on on these mountainous uh, region and uh, during the period of of um, Anato uh, uh, of Mesopotamian history that we're talking about, right? There are probably hunting and gathering societies that are living there. I'm not talking about the Iranian plateau. Uh, uh, on its own because there is the civilization of Elam here, which unfortunately we won't get into, uh, which is as old as the Mesopotamian civilizations. And there is another civilization to the southeast of uh, Iran, which is also as old as the Mesopotamian civilizations. But, but we are just beginning to learn about these Right, and you see how how our knowledge of history changes with profound implications for us. Right, we are just beginning to um, to realize that these uh, that these civilizations existed to begin with, and we are just beginning to see the degree of their sophistication. And we know, of course, as we will talk about it. And they were connected with Mesopotamia, um, so there was a, a sort of a two-way exchange, sort of that ha was happening here. Now, of course, as we will see, Mesopotamia is connected to all of the other regions that we have just talked about, right? We will see. Okay, so um, so as we we had talked about this, Mesopotamia means the land between two rivers in in uh, in uh, in Greek, right? And and we 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 must know by now that the rivers were central to the to the to the way of life of Mesopotamian society, right? That it was the lifeline of um of mesopotamian um society right so um so this was the tigris and euphrates and remember with tigris and euphrates the way you remember it is that et is going to iran right is going to the center of the world uh, right okay so um so now but the tigris and euphrates right are were not always benevolent 
right? They were not always benevolent because the uh, the 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 climate and the 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 regions that they 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 found themselves up in, you know, hot, dry climate of um of the um of the fertile crescent and and Syrian desert and whatnot. Nevertheless, in spite of having all these bodies of water, right, uh, uh, right, and this is getting to the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, and this is the Persian Gulf, right? And remember, rem we remember how the, um, here, how the water, right when we are talking about western asia and and right we are not talking about middle east anymore since once you have taken my course you don't take you don't talk about middle east anymore my friends right because um as we said before this is a very loaded concept right and and uh, what we want to do instead is to call the region by the continental name that we must give to it, right? And since we are talking about Asia, right, and we're talking about Western Asia here, when we are talking about Mesopotamia, that's what we should call it, right? We call it Western Asia. So the climate of Western Asia, right, um, was is not a very hospitable climate, Right. So, so, but, but not only that, but you see the mountains and when you see the mountains, when you see mountains, um, you are sure to have, you know, a, a different kind of, um, clima uh, clim um, climatic sort of, um, setup. You get snow definitely when you have high mountains as you do in Caucasus here so you and, and it is very very cold extremely cold so it is not like um the 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 the, the climate is is um, monolithic so to speak is is only dry right you have actually different kinds of climates right that that present themselves according to the the natural uh, sort of context in which they found them, find themselves so mountains right are always cooler right obviously than uh, than 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 obviously than deserts right and and it snows, right? It snows on the mountains, and it is you know from one year to the next, right? We it is not clear how much it will be slow, snowing. So it it will be time. There will be times, right? That the the snows accumulated. Um, you know, it's a particularly harsh winter in the Caucasus, right? The, so the snow is accumulated, and in the uh, and and it it. Um, and once it melts, right, it overflows, right? It makes overflows into the two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, right? And it leads to abrupt, right, uh, ab abrupt um, sort of flooding at the time of a year where you have just planted your seeds, Right, uh, planted your seeds, and you're waiting for your uh, for your seeds to grow and uh, and whatnot. And all of a sudden, right, the same rivers, the same rivers that were a lifeline for you, right, the same rivers become a deadly, deadly, deadly force, right. So every once in a while. Right, you would have, or you know, from the waters coming from the rest of the mountains, you know, raining uh, um, a, a lot at some point, right? And these rivers flood, right? Uh, the rivers that were the the lifeline, right, of 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 this region, right, become the the sort of the force of its death, so to speak, right? Um, and so, so one of the things that I want you to remember about Tigris and Euphrates also is that at some point during this period that we are talking about, the rivers, right, um, were 
two, but became one and and sort of around, you know, that cent- central node, they became one, and then they flew as, uh, they, 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 yeah, they, they sort of uh, emptied as one river into the Persian Gulf, right? Um, so, um, so deadly floods, right? Um, deadly floods are, 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 uh, are one of the important aspects, right, of the Tigris and uh, Euphrates river system, right? And, and you know, of course, once it, it, it floods, right, it destroys livelihoods, right? It destroys homes, it destroys fields, it destroys everything that it finds on its way, right? Um, uh, we, we see... Uh, we see modern um, equivalents of, of, of it, a man-made equivalents to these um, floodings and whatnot. Okay, so um, all of this, I have put a um, nice uh, s- short video uh, for you with uh, with uh, with uh, with good graphics, right? That that compares. Tigris and Euphrates system with the Egyptian system, which we will get to. But so that's the what's the videos of nice graphics. Uh, okay, and okay. So um, I want I want white. Yes. So um, so yeah. So. Um, I want you to remember this, flooding on unpredictably, right? Flooding unpredictably. Okay. Now, we take this and you afraid this, right? Now, for those of you, for those of you who think geography doesn't matter, Right. For those of you who think that, you know, the land on which you live doesn't matter. I think there are very, very few of you, few of, uh, of you out there. But nevertheless, if we, if I have amongst my beautiful souls some who think that geography doesn't matter, I want you to think again, because the fact that the Tigris and Euphrates flooded, right, unpredictably, right, and led to the destruction of life, right? Hmm? What does it what does it affect? Right? When you're living in a situation where um you know at at any um sort of quote unquote moment in your life, right, your life could be destroyed, right? What kind of an outlook would that give you, right? in terms of your religion in, in what are the forces right that you that you that that you conceive of right when when you see that um you know the natural forces around you uh, are so powerful right what becomes you know what are, are the most powerful right uh, so uh, your 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 sense of um sense of uh, what it is that leads to creation and death, right? Um, I.e., um, your sense of the gods, right? Your your perspective of your gods, right? Uh, becomes also um, also different, right? Um, the uh, your 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 gods. You have to appease your gods, right? You have to constantly give them offering, right? To make sure that there is t- stability, right? To make sure that they are stable, they create stability in your land, right? And so so for, for one thing, it gives you a pessimistic uh, sort of outlook on life on some level, right? Uh, but on the other hand, it, it might it might give you the sense that hey, you know the it, it, you know we are on this on this earth right compared to the chronologies that we are talking about I have been talking about just one moment right um 
and and so there um therefore um you know what is uh, and and this moment can end any day any day so why bother right why bother and have a you know just live your life to the fullest right of course you know that that you call that a uh, um hedonistic way of life right um which if if it if it if it totally overwhelms your um your 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 life right it 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 takes away the meaning of your life right if you think um that yeah okay i'm here for two days only so um why do i bother right uh, well <laughs> you know why you bother right because you have brilliant minds and to uh, you know a moment in life is a, a long time to do um in human terms is also a long time okay my friends so so let's go um i mean we will start from a, a chronology that goes uh, goes uh, even earlier than this but for now just um, um a general chronology you th you see that you know 3 3500 bc in mesopotamia right and you see by 3000 by the early dynastic period you have the sumerian right uh, f the early dynastic period in fact uh, is um Okay, the early Sum uh, 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 early dynastic period is in fact the Sumerian period, and I want you to pay attention to the fact that it goes from three thousand to twenty three fifty BCE, right? I.e., it's going forward in time, right? To to get to Christ, right? Um, uh, and and it corresponds right to the early dynastic period of Egypt. Right, early dynastic period of Egypt, and um, and to the old kingdom of Egypt, right? Yeah, and you see that we remember that we talked about the Sumerian being an isolate. Uh, sorry. Isolate language, right? Isolate language, right? So, um, so, um, and and you see, okay, there that is that is one population, uh, the population of Sumerians, right? Um, in Mesopotamia, but you will see that by two three twenty three fifty BCE, you have a Semitic population that comes in and then mingles with the Sumerian population, right, and, and cultural tradition, right, and then um, for, for unknown reasons, the, this Akkadian empire that we uh, talk about with the coming of the Semitic population, right, this Akkadian empire um, is 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 while very very important as we will see is rather short lived, right? Because it goes from twenty three fifty to twenty two thirty. But Akkadians were already, of course, you know, when you're talking about migrations, you're not talking about like eruptions of volcanoes, mm, whatever Trump um, wants us to believe, right? Um, so, so you you're talking about gradual, right? Gradual migrations as well, right? So you 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 can very well assume, and you will be correct in that assumption that so, uh, that the Semitic population were living side by side of the Sumerians, uh, to begin with, right? So this was not such an alien culture. So, but what for what what for reasons that is not clear to us. Reasons that are not clear to us. Um, 
Yes, now I learned it, my friends. Okay, um, the 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 Akkadian uh, uh, Empire comes to an ad abrupt end, right? But the achievements that they have um, had, um, I'm sorry, that they uh, that the whole culture has had thus far, right? Uh, resurfaces again on the in the third dynasty of Ur, right? Third dynasty of Ur, which is again Sumerian, right? Uh, until again, once again, gets to the old Babylonian, and by fifteen hundred, you see that we are talking about yet another population, meaning the Kassites. Right, and and we'll talk about the Kassites later on when we get to it. This is a general chronology, and as I said, we will go, um, we will go um, further back in a second to um, back in time, right, to four thousand five thousand, and yeah, uh, in time, right. Um, but um, but but what I, what I want you to remember already, my friends, right, is that um, various populations, right, were already living in this stretch of land, right, um, that uh, that we call Mesopotamia, right. Um, various populations already were living there. Sumerians and side by the side of them, um, Semitic populations, and we will see it will get um, much more sort of complicated and 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 true to its nature um, later on. Um, so, um, but okay, I told you we we're going to start with a little bit earlier, right? And that is called the Obeid period of Mesopotamian history, right? And that goes from 5000 BCE to 4100 BCE, right? And it's called Obeid for the simple reason that the region in which they currently found, right, uh, the major finds of this culture um, was was basically um, Tell is is a small mountain, right, or hill. Let's let's say hill, right, uh, a small hill, and 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 that's usually, um, you know, usually the, the, where you see these kinds of um, sort of um, natural uh, scenery, right? Uh, you, you can tell that, the, you, I mean, it might be that there were um, sort of um, cities that have been destroyed underneath it. So that was the case with um, the, the culture of Obeid, right? Um, which was found on Tel Obeid. Right, uh, we have very little information of them, and what little information that we have of them is the beautiful pottery, right? Um, that uh, that 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 they produced already, right? And so, and and, and you you look at this, um, you look at this beautiful pottery, right? And you say what? What do you say when you see these, right? The potteries, right? I mean, you, you have to consider. Let's go back. Okay. Consider this shape, right? Consider this shape, right? Um, I mean, how can you come up with this shape, right? You know, how can you produce this shape, right? Uh, you, you can tell that it's, it's created as a result of a sort of spherical movement of some sort, right? And then you think, well, um, what can give, give this kind of a um, sort of um, spherical movement, right? Uh, yeah, and, and, and you, you think, 
wait a minute, it, it, it seems like some kind of a wheel of some sort, right, is creating this. So, um, uh, to be honest with you, as my, this is not my, uh, Mesopotamia is not, I mean, uh, bear with me. Okay, ancient Mesopotamia is not exactly uh, my period of expertise. Incidentally, I you, you 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 might want to know that my period of ex expertise and the period that I specialize on as a historian is the period uh, that we will be covering in this course, and that's the period, say, around from about um, you know. Um, 400 um, CE, right, onwards, right, and to, to, to basically to 1200, uh, if you will, um, CE, right? Um, so we will call, so, 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 you know, um, so it is a question for me as far as that obeyed period um, pottery that we saw is concerned is this is a question that I have at the moment of whether or not the obeyed period uh, populations already knew of wheels. And if you think that this idea, right, is a simple idea, right? The idea of wheels is a simple idea, and the invention of wheels is a simple um, matter of um, sort of technology. I beg you to think again, right? Be and, and just look around you, right? Uh, look around you and see... What do you see on wheels? Where do you see wheels in in your household items? In, in you know on your cars and I mean you name it, right? Um, so we will get to that. So uh, if if uh, if if this um, invention of wheels goes back to the even um, later obeyed period, right? Uh, um, I I I would be extremely, extremely um, kind of fascinated, <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay, so just let me, let me continue because uh, I don't, I don't want my, um, my, um, my lectures to be, to be too long and too boring, but, but there are a lot to be talked about, right? So as you saw, so there is the obeyed period, right? And we start even before 3500, right? We start with 5,4100 BC, right? And there is this obeyed culture all of a sudden. We don't know much about it, right? We don't know where these people came from, right? They had probably just recently shifted from a hunting-gathering society into an agricultural society, right? And had established small ruling communities already um, by the Obeid period, right? And I want you to pay attention. The Obeid period leads to the Uruk period. And I want you to look at the fact that the Uruk period is, is rather, rather long, right? Um, is rather long. And uh, yeah, so it, the, the city, the city of Uruk, right? which is located, uh, I, we will see in a, well, I don't have the map here um, yet. Um, okay, the Uruk period, right, um, you s it is called after the city of Uruk, right? After the city of Uruk, which we can see here, right? Okay, this is the civilization of Elam, to the yellow that you see that I had talked about, right? And you see to the to the um, left 
side of the map, one of the last cities on the on the on the sort of reddish part, is the city of Uruk, right? So. Uh, the city of Uruk was so important, right? One of the first, one of the first and most important cities, right? That um, and that and according to um, the Sumerian king list, which we are going to come across again, um, it um, it um, it was built by a king called King. America, right, and uh, and 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 it it, it it during the Uruk period, obviously there were a series of kings, right. Excuse me, as was the case case during the uh, well, not not yet during the Obaid period, but during the Uruk period, right, you you start to get um, already a, a a king list, right. I mean a Sumerian king list, right. Um, so the so when was it cre created the city built sometime sometime okay uh, grasp this my friends forty five hundred right forty five hundred um, before Christ right uh, in other words um, six to seven um, um, okay. In a, forget about the in other words, okay? Um, anyway, uh, my friends, we will talk about Gilgamesh um, as well, right? The the famous king of um, of Uruk, right? And the epic that he has left us, right? And the epic that um, he has left us. And, uh, and 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 we will see um, what important achievements and what important contributions right um, that that one you know that series of literature that was produced by Sumerians right um, have given us we will see that when we talk about the religion right uh, so writing begins to develop during the Uruk period, right? You have the cylinder seals that were very, very important, um, excuse me, that developed, okay, um, during this period. And these, right, my friends, these were um, cylinder-like, yeah, cylinder-like um, sort of instruments, right? That you you sort of pressed sideways, right? On uh, on on uh, on you know clay, but not uh, hardened clay, right? Uh, and 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 you see um, you see a scene, right? Uh, in this case. Um, a scene of uh, votive offerings to a god but but what you usually uh, see also in these cylinder seals it's a, it's a, um it's either um you know it it could be also um sort of uh, the the insignia so to speak of the owner of something, right? So once you have seals as such, right? Um, you 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 can talk about you you meet, you you understand that you're talking about personal property. Where are we? You're talking about personal property, right? And you remember what we said: the minute you settle, right, um, you have the ability to accumulate wealth. Right there begins the inequities, right? Um, that that start gripping human societies from time immemorial. Except that we are kind currently in twenty first century, right? And we are so proud of ourselves because we are twenty first century men and women, right? And we still have horrific. 
inequalities on the planet that we live on as well as in the country in which we find ourselves right so the city was was um was um sort of inhabited continuously inhabited until 300 ce ce and probably tigris and euphrates right were ultimately uh, and 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 the climate and whatnot were ultimately um, sort of responsible uh, for the um, for uh, for people um, deserting the cities, right? Um, of course, oh, as we will see throughout this course, half of the um, knowledge that we have garnered about this past that we can that we can give credit where credit is due right is by europeans right it, it was it, it, i have to stop i guess because my battery is running low after this but it was by um by europeans in this case by william loftus for the british for the british museum so and i want you to keep in mind nevertheless here is colonialism at work right colonialism at work <coughs> but also intellectual curiosity, right? <coughs> Excuse me, please, my friends. So I'm going to stop here and connect my, uh, my um, technological instrument again to electricity, right? And, and, and pick it up again um, later.